Hello! In this ECE 102 video, we'll discuss how to convert a measurement from one unit to another. You may have done this before in other classes, but you might not know the proper format, which will be emphasized in this video and expected to be used throughout this course. What you see here is a list of conversion factors. There is a small area on the right that shows metric prefixes, but the bulk of the sheet is conversion factors. They are grouped by the dimension being measured, such as mass, length, area, and so on. I strongly encourage you to have a printed out copy of this sheet with you as you go through this course. What is a conversion factor? It is a relationship that allows conversion from one unit to another. Some conversion factors are definitions and are perfectly precise. For example, one foot is exactly the same length as 12 inches. There is no rounding error. Or one hour is exactly the same time span as 3600 seconds. Some conversion factors are approximations, which means they have some rounding error associated with them. These are only precise to the number of significant figures given. For example, one meter is almost equivalent to 3.28 feet. In reality, it is closer to 3.281 feet. But we could add digits to get even more precise than that. Another example is something you might see written on a toilet. One gallon equals 3.785 liters. Well, the toilets I've seen actually round that to 3.8 liters. For that particular application, extreme precision isn't very important. Alrighty, pop quiz time! Let's see if you can answer these tough questions. What is 5 times 1? It's simply 5. What is 6 times 1? It's 6. Now, a little bit tougher. What is 5 times 10 divided by 10? The 10 over 10 is just the same as 1. So 5 times 1 gives us 5. We can get fancier and throw in a word that represents a value. What is 5 times 12 over a dozen? Again, we are just multiplying by 1, and the result is the original value 5. Finally, I can multiply by fractions that equal 1 as many times as I want. The result would still be the original value 5. I hope the big idea is clear. Any quantity multiplied by 1 is not being changed. And this is all we are allowed to do with unit conversions. If I measure a desk to be 4 feet long, that physical quantity is fixed. The desk is not changing length. If I want to express the length in inches, the number may change, but the measurement remains the same. So all we can do is multiply by 1. Keep this in mind, I might show you a trick problem in a couple of slides. Let's look at a couple of example problems. I really want to emphasize the formatting used in these examples. It is mathematically correct, which allows you to communicate your work with other people. You may have learned gimmicky approaches in other courses. If so, break out of those habits and use the format illustrated here. Okay, the first example asks us to convert 55 miles per hour into feet per second. Step one is write the given information as a vertical fraction within parentheses. You can see that here. Note that I wrote the shorthand symbols for miles and hour. Next, I need to identify which unit to convert first, the miles or hours. It really doesn't matter which. Here I chose hours into seconds. Where does this term come from? It comes from the conversion factor sheet. There we see the definition of 1 hour equals 3600 seconds. If we divide both sides by 3600, then divide both sides by seconds, what are we left with? 1. That whole term equals 1, which means we're allowed to multiply it and not change the quantity. An important note is that from the same factor, I could also say that 3600 seconds over 1 hour equals 1. Why did I choose this version of the fraction? Because it will allow the hours to cancel out. Hours here in the numerator cancels with hours here in the denominator. Now we're left with needing to convert miles into feet. 
The factor sheet tells us that 5,280 feet equals one mile. From that information I write this fraction, with miles in the denominator, so that it can cancel out with the given miles. And that is all we have to do for the setup. Now we go through and multiply or divide as written. These red lines show the units cancel out. That leaves us with units of feet per second, which was our goal. Lastly, we use our calculator to give us the numeric value. It turns out that 55 miles per hour equals 81 feet per second. Now on to example two. Here we are given a value in newtons per meters squared and asked to convert to pounds per inches squared. As usual, we write the starting information as a vertical fraction within parentheses. Then I choose to first convert the force term. The factor sheet tells us that one pound equals 4.45 newtons. Thus, this fraction here, with the newtons in the denominator, so it can cancel. Next, we must deal with the meter squared. On the factor sheet, we won't find a direct conversion from meter squared to inches squared. So what do we do? We look for a conversion from just meters to inches. Write it as a fraction, and then square that whole term. A square on the outside of parentheses means that it applies to each component inside. So these two expressions on the screen are interchangeable. This gives us what we need because this meter squared will cancel out with the original meter squared. Now the setup is complete. We cancel out these units and are left with pounds per inches squared. Then we use our calculator to crunch the numbers. Caution, don't forget to square the 39.4 on this step. After calculating, we see the result of 33.9 pounds per inches squared. This example is a great illustration of why I emphasize the proper formatting for unit conversions. It made it very simple and mathematically correct to square an entire term to get the needed conversion factor. Convert 52 centimeters squared to inches. What do we do here? Pause for a second and try to think of a strategy. Using the factor 1 inch equals 2.54 centimeters doesn't help because that would cancel out only one of the original centimeters squared. A temptation is to take the square root of the given value to turn centimeters squared to centimeters, but that isn't allowed. Remember, all we can do is multiply by one. It turns out that this is an impossible problem. The reason is that there is a dimension mismatch we cannot turn an area into a length. This would be similar to saying, the temperature outside is 78 inches. Before doing any unit conversion, we should verify that the dimensions match up. For example, area into area, or mass into another unit of mass. And now we get to our last example of this lesson. Convert 28 acre feet into yards cubed. Let's make sure we don't have the same situation as the previous example. Do the dimensions match up? Even though it may sound strange, acre feet means an acre of area multiplied by a foot of length. An area times a length gives us a volume. And our goal is to convert into yards cubed, which is a measure of volume. So this problem can be done. My approach is shown here. First, note that I write acre feet as acre times feet. It is not a subtraction operation like the original writing suggests. The reason you'll often see units with dashes between them rather than dots is that dashes are easy to type on a keyboard. A silly reason, I know, but one to be aware of. The first conversion factor gets us from acres into feet squared. If we stop here, we'd be left with feet cubed. So one more factor is necessary. One yard equals three feet, and outside the parentheses, we apply the cube. This allows all the other units to cancel out except yards, leaving yards cubed. And then using a calculator for the values gives us 45,000. This is about the most difficult unit conversion problem you will ever see. As long as you use the proper formatting, 
and understand how the exponents apply to each term within the parentheses? The process is a straightforward one.